you know once bruce lee said that knowing is not enough you must apply and that's the reason with every single video of this course or this playlist i am sharing a workbook you should download the same and start doing along with me or after watching the video just do it because knowing is not enough you just need to apply it then only we'll be able to retain it right so just be with me because this is going to be one of the most important video of this whole series why because i'm talking about vlookup and that's the most important because this is going to be saving you tons of time if you're doing a project a freelancing project or if you're doing a job if you're doing a job you know about it right you may have heard about it from someone or you may be using it yourself because this is that important function because every excel user uses this function or know about this function at least right or if you're in a business it will really help you to match up your data your different data sets so let's talk about it and head over to the excel file now over here what do we have we have some database let's talk about what vlookup is vlookup stands for vertical lookup and this is a part of the complete lookup functionality right okay now think about it you have two data set that you need to match suppose you have a new list of customers and then you have the old list of customers you need to match it what all new customers are there it means the updated not the new list but the updated list of customers with the previous month list and the new month list of customers you have to match those you need to compare those and you need to find out what all new customers who joined you or you can take an example of the list of employees right you have updated list of employees you need to find out the who whosoever is left your organization and whosoever is actually joined it so it's very much important that every now or then we have to compare the data and with the help of the look of functionality functions we just will be able to do it exactly the way we want it right so let's talk about it and over here we have the game ids we have the highest score we have the average score but you can see the name of the teams are missing if i head over to the previous worksheet you will notice one thing that i have the game ids with me and i have the names with me so what we have common in both the databases you can clearly see that we have game id which is common in both the databases right okay now we'll talk about the vlookup first and then i'll talk about that how you can go to the advanced part of it how you can figure out the rest of the function later on let us concentrate on the vlookup function right now okay this is just like in find feature of excel right control f the generally you use this is a formula version of control f you can just take it like this it becomes quite easier for us to understand right okay now over here first of all what do we need to do what do we, what do we need to understand here is that in both the sheets what is missing is name but what is common is game id so based on the game id we'll be able to fetch the names over here how we can do it first of all i'll be putting equals to we look up right okay now look at the syntax we have the lookup value table array column index number and range lookup out of which you can see range lookup is an optional argument and rest 3 are mandatory and lookup value is something which is active that's why it is bold we discuss about in the first video of the series right okay now the very first thing is what is lookup value now lookup value is something which is common in both the databases see focus on my words a lot guys right okay so lookup value is something which is common in both the databases so what is what do we have common that's game id so i will be selecting the game id that's common in both the databases comma now i'll go to the previous worksheet so there we go i'll just go to the previous worksheet and i'm here i've used the shortcut control page up right so i'm going to select the complete data over here i have selected the complete data that's my database in which i have to match the value and from there i have to pick up the value also it could be of any length doesn't matter right so i've selected the data comma now the column index number column index number is that number of your table array listen to this very carefully look the co column index number is that column number of your table array from where you need to pick up the values what we are looking for by the way we are looking for the name so that is why we need to mention the column number of that column 
which means of names column. If you can see, it is I column. Name is an I column. If I just count it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, it's going to be ninth column, right? But no, this is not a ninth column because we have started our selection from column H and that's why column H is going to be our column number one and name is going to be our column number two. So that's why column index number is going to be two. So I'm going to put two over here and that's it. So that's my column index number. So there are a lot of things to understand over here, which I'm not going into. I'm not going to confuse you right now. There are so lo lot many things which are there, there which is in depth. Like if the data is shuffled, for example, if we have columns in between, so what would be the column index number? I'm not going into that right now. I'll tell you that from where you can actually get all that in depth idea, right? So I'll just put a comma over here. And now it is talking about what the range lookup. Now range lookup is whether it is true or false. It means whether it is approximate match or it's going to be an exact match. First of all, the question is what kind of match we are talking about over here. Match of lookup value, right? Lookup value is what? The game ID. Do you want Excel to match it exactly? Yes, I want it. Why? Because it's a game ID, which is uniquely assigned to the games. Why it is happening that we are talking about the exact match? You got the idea, right? And in 99% of the cases, we talk about the exact match because we generally apply VLOOKUP on something unique, almost always, right? When to use the true or the approximate match, I'll talk about that later on. But right now, it's going to be exact match, which is false. So either I can type false or I can also put zero, right? In place of true, we can put one. So it's completely up to us. Now, I'll be just closing down the bracket over here and then enter and I will be getting the value and that's it. We got the value as our first, the name of the team, right? Now, you'll notice one thing, the moment I'm going to copy and paste it down over here. Look at that. I'm going to double click. Now the problem is that I'm getting some NAs, right? It means the value is not available. For which game IDs you can see the value is not available. Can you see over here? Because for these game IDs, the value is not available. So I've already mentioned it to you. Once we are putting zero at the end, it means it, it couldn't find out the value over there in that sheet. So let's figure it out. Do we have game ID 7, 8, 9, 10 over there or not? If I go over there, yes, we have all the game IDs which are mentioned over here. So what could be the reason? The reason is that the range is not fixed. What, what, what do we mean by that? The, the meaning is that over here, the range, can you see this particular range? This is not freezed and because of that, it is just shifting away. Look at that. First of all, we have the reference over here as A6, right? A6 is this cell. The moment we copy and paste it down, you will notice that A6 will become A7. It happens a lot, right? And similarly, if that is happening, it should be happening with what H2 to I21 also. If it is H2 to I21, what is that H2 to I21? Is basically this particular range. This is H2 to I21. Now, if we just copy and paste it down, this will change to H3 to I22. What is H3 to I22 is basically this range. Can you see that? It means it got shifted away by one row. The moment you copy and paste the function down, that's the major problem that we are facing right now. It means we should tell Excel that once we copy and paste the formula down, it should not slip away this range. So we have to freeze it. Now, how to freeze it? Excel says that if you want to freeze a range, you just need to put a dollar sign before that, right? But before what? That we also need to figure it out. And that's not that difficult. Initially, it seems like, but you have to make a habit. As I've already mentioned earlier, knowing is not enough. You have to apply it, right? So let me just open up the function. I'm using control tilde, a shortcut to open all the functions over here. Now you'll notice one thing that A6, A7, A8, all these are fine. There's no problem with that. The problem lies in this particular range, which is H2 to I21, H3 to I22, H4 to I23, and so on and so forth. But over here, you'll also notice one very important thing that H and I are not changing. What changing is 2, 3, 4, 5, 21, 22, 23. It means the rows are changing. And why the rows are changing? Because you are copying and pasting it down inside the rows. We are not shuffling in between the columns, right? So as I've already mentioned, we have to put in the dollar sign just before what you would like to freeze. And we have to freeze the rows. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before two. 
and similarly a dollar sign before 21 there we go i'll press enter and now if i copy and paste it down you will notice that now i'm getting 2 and 21 throughout and now if i just close all the formulas using the same shortcut key which is control uh, tilde and there we go we got all the values this one is also a value over there don't worry about it so it means we got all the values right and the right way of putting this function one last time I'm going to put a function for you is equals to vlookup right lookup value just be with me guys speak up lookup value is going to be the game id right okay comma table array will be we need to go to the previous worksheet using chat shortcut control page up and now we need to select this range right so i've selected this range and we can simply use a shortcut to freeze up the data using f4 key so i'm pressing f4 once and there we go we got all the dollar signs in my laptop my i'm using a lenovo laptop right now so in this laptop i have to use the function key along with it so it depends upon the keyboard that you have on your laptop maybe you have to you can press f4 uh, straight away or you have to use a function key along with it but in any case you have pressed it and you're getting dollar signs everywhere this is what we call an absolute reference so this won't change at all i'm going to press f4 once again now you'll notice that it has freeze the rows but not columns right it has freeze the rows but not column this is what we wanted which is known as a mixed reference mixed means either we are freezing row or a column now i'm pressing f4 once again now if it has freeze the columns but not rows so it's again a case of mixed reference again i'm pressing f4 so you got the idea that f4 is a toggle shortcut so at the time of writing the function you can use the shortcut to toggle between the dollar signs now i'll be freezing f i'm pressing f4 once only once now why why i'm freezing everything because we need to freeze 2 and 21 remember i've told you the reason but why i'm freezing h and i because it was not changing and if i put a dollar sign before that it won't change so hardly matter so that's why for ranges always keep in mind that you have to press the dollar sign or the f4 key only once right and then comma the column index number is 2 comma 0 bracket close enter we got the value now i'm going to double click on the right bottom corner to get all the values you may have to rewatch this video because it's a very important function it takes time to understand right i've kept all the efforts to make you understand about this feature or the function of excel you have to rewatch it that's my suggestion to you right i believe you got the idea now as i'm mentioning earlier to you that this is a basic level of lookup functionality if you're doing a job if you're getting a project you know it's very much important that sometimes the data is not in a manner that we have it's a very cleaned up data right you may have to apply double vlookup you have you may have to apply vlookup with match we look up with the the you know data validation you have to use index and match also you have to use the dollar sign in different ways there are lots of things that you can do with lookup functionality now i'll show you that how you can actually do it now i have covered all those things in my in-depth course as you can see i've also shared the link you will find the link over there also and that's the in-depth course we have over here i have kept another complete section for the lookup functionality can you see over here it starts with the vlookup which is just we have discussed over here that's one thing we discussed apart from that so i have a lot of exercises over here also now how to use the dollar sign I'll explain that in a very much detail with the practical examples and then we discussed about that again another example of vlookup right and then how you can use a nested vlookup a double vlookup also we look up with the duplicate values because lookup functionality won't work with the duplicate value so how we can actually do it and the you look use of we look up with the approximate match the true case right how we can do it and we look up with if there's a very in-depth module guys and then h lookup what is horizontal lookup and then i've discussed about h lookup with the approximate match then lookup also is a se separate function then we look up with match in which you can actually get the value of multiple columns which is not even possible only using vlookup right now what match is all about so i've used a match separately and given you another exercise to do it and finally we've used index and match in which the data is shuffled still you'll be able to get the values and we have another exercise on the same so all this covered in my in-depth course on excel the link is already mentioned you can just check it out now i believe you got a very good idea about how we can actually use the lookup functionality guys We'll be talking about an in-depth function in the next video. So let's head over to that. 
and just be with me again i'm telling you you need to apply it knowledge is not enough you have to just apply it thank you